Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers, if you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. How could we forget David Ramsey? Well, we don't forget, but the suits forget to write stuff. Yes. Up for discussion today is episode 323. My name is Oliver Queen. It is the free finale. <laughs> uh, it was uh, interesting. It's been a brutal season, and this is an interesting way to thank your fans for sticking through this season. Um, but if you're an velocity shipper, I guess you, you got the win. You got the gold trophy. <laughs> Uh, so, Ellie? so, so, how do you deal with uh, your hero saying that's okay? I quit. <laughs> Poor girl. <laughs> well, I mean, you you like the the relationship. We both agree that they're not ready for each other. But uh, I mean, you're more of the 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 ass. Yes, yes. I, did you like the ending? The ending left. If it was just a standalone episode, them driving off into the sunset, it left me scratching my head. Really. I want to see them together. They're not ready for each other. Okay, you know, all this crazy stuff happened and we're just going to drive in a car. (laughs) Do you think that by the time season four opens that they'll be broken up for good? I feel like this road trip was a bad idea. Yeah, the road trip was a very bad idea. Like I said, they're just not ready for each other yet. Hopefully they kind of come to that conclusion, but it's Oliver. So I kind of doubt that that's going to happen. Because Oliver just can't seem to make a good choice yeah i i really don't know what they're what they're gonna do from here on out i I literally have no clue what we're doing but i was scratching my head at the end of the episode it literally felt like a series finale like i i for the life of me just can't understand why it had to end i mean season four supposedly is supposed to have a lighter tone which is a little unfortunate i feel like season we should have opened the series with Oliver kind of being like without the flashbacks do you know what I mean yeah kind of being just this this reckless playboy and then like you know and so we have a light fun tone of him partying and then maybe he makes a, a terrible mistake I feel like maybe we shouldn't have gone with the direct arrow mythos in that regard that way we could have gradually gotten darker because I think it's harder to go from dark to light than it is yes. to light to dark you know what I mean? I agree with you. So I just, it's unfortunate that they, what they wanted to do by having Oliver kill, it was kind of like this backlash and they've been kind of digging themselves out of this hole ever since. Yeah. Which I didn't think it was a mistake. I think it was the only way to really separate Arrow from Batman back. Because Batman, regardless, doesn't kill <laughs> no matter what. So we all know this. And so by doing that, you know, you can separate it and, Green Arrow has had a grittier run overall than Batman. So I just, for the life of me, I just feel like this has just been a big uh, snafu. (laughs) One big long snafu after another. And, you know, I'm just hoping that season four can take us out of this downward spiral tailspin thing that we're in. Yes. So let's just uh, actually talk about this episode. I'll start with some pertinent information. Uh, Let's see. Uh, So... (laughs) Uh, the big three were all involved in this story, and it was really hard for me to believe. Uh, the story was by Greg Belanti and Andrew Pressburg, and the teleplay was by Mark Guggenheim and Jake Holberg. And this episode was directed by John Barry. Now, that 
was a stroke of genius to have John Barryman direct this episode. That is something that I very much approve. I like his uh, directorial execution. I love his directorial eye. Uh, but again, they kind of do this from time to time with John Barryman. This wasn't a very action-packed episode, and that's something that he's very good at. That's what I love mm-hmm. to see him get a chance to direct. But I still thought, all in all, he did a really good job with what he was given. And he pulled out some really good performances from a lot of the characters. Right. Despite what was written on the page. <laughs> I, that, I'm always happy to see him. So, can, uh, can you, uh, did, did you feel like this was a big three episode? I, I really did. No, I didn't either. I, to me, it just felt kind of disjointed. I don't know why we always seem to go back to this, that it's too many stories trying to be told in one episode, let alone, well, one season, let alone one episode. Right. Yeah, that, that's that been the kind of, well, actually, it's been no story, really, this season. Then they just try to kind of race to the finish line, I think is what happened. Yeah. I think we spent a li- way too much time with flashbacks for what it was. Yes. Uh, let's get the synopsis and then we can break this down. Everyone's lives are in danger as Ra's al Ghul puts forth his final plan. Oliver, also him, must decide if he's strong enough to take on his new role and what it will mean for everyone on Team Arrow and his soul. Open up. My name is Oliver Queen with um, Oliver, Raz, and the League members with Mr. Into flying to Star City to use the bioweapon. Instantly we cut to Nanda Prabhat where Team Arrow regains consciousness and wonders why they're not dead. Malcolm goes, well you can thank me, little lady. And I'm like, yeah, it's still your fault that they were in this situation in the first place, so why don't you pipe the hell down, sir? Um, well, they're alive but they still need to escape, so it's a good thing Oliver called in a favor with Barry because Barry in his flash regalia speeds in the native robot, takes care of the guards, frees tattoo, lets them out of the dungeon. And this, my friends, is why we don't always call the flashing boss ex machina. <laughs> uh, Felicity asks Barry to help, but Barry's like, yeah, I got my own big bag to deal with the Central City, so peace out, y'all. So the team kind of tries to get their gear, but Barry doesn't leave before he encourages them to trust Oliver and then speeds off. And then Tatsu's like, uh, I'm actually not going to fight. I'm just going to return to my solid, my fortress of solitude later, y'all. <laughs> then we uh, cut back to the League's plane that starts malfunctioning. And Roz, Roz League's this to tamper with it. But Oliver's like, nah, I did this. And he's like, but your aunt's on him. And Oliver's like, no, my name is Oliver Queen. And I was just like, ugh. And then so him and Nissa work together to take down all the stupid league lackeys. And Raz, after taking Oliver and Nissa down by himself, grabs the last parachute and the bioweapon. Before jumping, he promises that he will continue hunting them if they survive the crash. Once Raz jumps, Oliver and Nissa somehow manage to land the plane. That's weird. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Anyway, Team Hero arrives in Ray's lab. Malcolm tries to give orders, but no one listens. And then Oliver and Nissa burst through the ceiling. Diggle decks Oliver, and Oliver, Diggle, and Felicity are given a little privacy. Oliver reveals that he kept Malcolm close because he had inside information about the League. Oliver intended to crash the plane to kill Ross and destroy the bioweapon in one fell swoop. And then Felicity is horrified to realize it was a suicide mission. I'm like, well, no, that that was actually a pretty damn good idea. Um, mm-hmm. You hurt the ones you love to make them miss you a little less, you know? <laughs> yep. When Oliver, Oliver apologizes, Diggle doesn't accept. However, Diggle recognizes that personal things don't matter when the city is in danger, which is why he should be the real leader, the sand. Uh, Felicity, looking for abnormalities around the city, finds the top floor of a hotel has been closed for a Damien Dark. Both this and Oliver realize Roz's plan to use the bioweapon was both for Oliver's ascension and for revenge. Uh, Team Arrow clears the way for Oliver to enter the floor and Oliver confronts a man he believes to be dark but it's only one of his employees. What a waste of Christopher Hydral. Hydral. Oh my god are you serious? But we had him first and better on Beauty and the Beast. Just saying. Mm-hmm. So he also was Alistair on Supernatural so I was just having mostly fandom feels. I think he was something in maybe Marvel. Yeah. I think so. Doesn't matter to me on that front. So moving right along. The employee gets a call before being shot through the window. The call is, call is from Roz, who declares the virus will release from four points across Starling City. While Laurel approaches her father at Central City PD. Uh, Central City. Starling City PD. You see where I'd rather be, right? <laughs> Lance isn't interested in hearing about Oliver. And then Laurel calls her father out on drinking. And she tells him that he has every right to be angry with her and Oliver. 
but falling off the wagon is on him. So either he wants to be a hero or he wants to be drunk. The choice is his, and she leaves. And he actually does the right thing because, damn it, it's Paul Blackthorne as Quentin Lance. And at the end of the day, in the clutch, Quentin Lance is going to be a freaking hero. That's right. Finally, we're back to decent Quentin. <sighs> they, they took him way off track, and I'm very upset. Which is why the summer is dedicated to Paul Blackthorne, because they wait, they squandered Quentin this season. Anyway, back at Palmer Technologies, the team makes a plan of attack. Felicity brings Oliver some coffee, and they talk. She actually brought him coffee after the big deal of not be bringing him coffee. Oh, I'm sorry. That just always sticks out in my head. What happens during this stupid talk? Because anytime they start talking, I tend to, my brain glazes over now. Oliver tells Felicity about a recurring dream he's had since the mountain and about running away with Felicity rather than facing Roz. Oliver knows he can't beat Roz. Felicity replies that while Oliver, Queen, and Arrow can't defeat Roz, those men are gone. She tells him that someone else, something else can. And I'm like, well, what the hell else is left? Really, what, I mean, if it's not Oliver, Queen, and it's not the Arrow, I mean, Green Arrow, okay, whatever. But, like, seriously, at this point, what else is left? Not a whole lot. So she tells Oliver to fight to live. Ah, that was just a coin schmaltz right out of a comic book conversation kind of upset me but anyway captain lance takes laurel's advice and assembles his officers to help against the attack he gives his officer orders meanwhile team arrow splits up across the city oliver from his vantage point of course is confronted by a league member who delivers Roz's uh well racious summons they will have a final showdown at the dam of course diggle catches sight of a man with a briefcase and gets chased he fights the man and diggle goes down but is rescued by thea dressed in a modified arsenal costume and complete with her own red arrows of course however the briefcase is empty and they realize that the league members themselves are the carriers the assassin slits his throat and the virus goes airborne not good while oliver and Roz face off at the dam Roz will get his way no matter the outcome of his fight uh, because if he wins and he kills Oliver, and if Oliver wins, he becomes Razavul, the next Razavul, just like he wants. Uh, the police officers uh, catch sight of the two and are ready to shoot, despite Lance's orders not to. So Lance calls up Felicity, tells her what's what. At Palmer Technology, Ray has created an antidote, is making it airborne via nanotech. At least it's nanotech, and it's not Lucius Fox. <laughs> yes. A so, little less Batman reference stuff here. However, he can't leave the computer terminal to help Oliver and finish the antidote. We're going to jump the shark. Um, <laughs> Oliver is about to kill him when Oliver takes advantage of the monologue. He fatally stabs Roz. Roz gives his ring to Oliver and says he chose well. Roz falls over dead, and moments later, Oliver is shot by the police and tumbles over the railing into the dam. However, he is rescued midair by a shark. <clears throat> I mean, Felicity and Adam. <laughs> I felt very Iron Man 3 there. I know. I know. Can we just call her Pepper Potts now? Yeah, I know. So, Pepper? <laughs> oh, it, it annoyed me. So, with the airborne antidote and the work of Team Arrow starting to be a save, everyone reconvenes at Palmer Technologies, and Oliver thanks everyone, even Malcolm. He says that the city has plenty of heroes to look after it. However, he can't be the arrow again, so he plans to quit and be Oliver Queen with Felicity. Not before Diggle storms off, and then Oliver follows him. Diggle's happy for Oliver and Felicity, but he can't move what's passed between them. Oliver's not asking him to, but if Diggle decides to keep going out with the others, he should definitely conceal his identity. The two shake hands, and Diggle leaves. Later, Malcolm arrives at the Queen Loft, and like Oliver, Malcolm will be leaving Starling. Thea doesn't want anything to do with him, despite Malcolm saying he will always be there for her. But she does thank him for keeping his promise to her to teach her to be strong. Oliver pulls a selfish move again, comes down, but at least he says goodbye to Thea this time. Uh, she suggests she go by the name Red Arrow, but Oliver says he told everyone to already call her Speedy. Oliver then gives Malcolm Roz's ring, which makes me want to vomit. And declares that he'll never forgive him for what he did to Sarah. Or Malcolm believes this makes them enemies again. But Oliver replies that it depends what on what he does next. The dumbest thing that Oliver has ever freaking. Back at Palmer Technologies, Ray's working on his shrinking suit. His first test doesn't work though, and the suit explodes. Uh, but no worries, considering he's on the spinoff, I'm pretty sure he survived. You know what I kind of wonder with kind of the way thing. It, things were left between Oliver and Diggle if Diggle will end up helping the new heroes on the new show for a bit. 
that would be interesting to actually give them some freaking lines and not just stand around with their arms crossed. Yes. But I didn't feel it. Well, this show is a mid-season show, so anything could probably happen at this point. They did say that they were going to take some time out of Flash and Arrow at the beginning of uh, their seasons, uh, four and two respectively, uh, to build up the spinoff. So it would just be interesting because Diggle would be a very good mentor. He really would. I would like that very much. Cut to Nana Prabhat. Malcolm reveals that the prophecy could also apply to him as he survived Roz's tortures both many months ago. Not miss or swear to have Sarah, but for the time being, she kneels. She actually kneels along the rest of the league. And I'm like, Megatron and Starscream! Yes! <laughs> you know what? That should have been the freaking spinoff. <laughs> miss and Malcolm just going at each other's throat every week. She's just plotting. That could have been fun. Anyway, we close with Oliver and Felicity driving into the sunset as Oliver admits that he's finally happy. And I, I swear to God, if this isn't a dream sequence, I'm going to lose my stuff. Because <laughs> it makes no sense. I know. That's why I said I was like scratching my head going, huh? Uh, we'll talk about Hong Kong really quick. Oliver and Maceo and Tatsu subdue, subdue Shreve and his men. Three days after the virus outbreak, Tatsu and Maceo receive uh, Akio's ashes in three small urns. Tatsu gives one to Maceo and one to Oliver. Tatsu prays for Akio and Oliver heads back to the store where Shreve is tied to a chair. He plans to use the special skills Amanda Waller believes him to have. Later, Tatsu and Maceo find Oliver and Shreve's mutilated body. Shreve is still alive, though, so Maceo shoots him. Maceo walks away and Tatsu follows. Maceo believes he's become a monster and must leave. Tatsu tries to convince him to stay, but he leaves anyway. Um, later, Oliver and Tatsu part ways. Tatsu plans to go to a shrine in Japan while Oliver boards a ship for his own adventures. And everybody's assuming it's Russia. And I swear to God, it better be Russia. Like, the Russian stuff seems so much fun because we've got uh, Anatoly, uh, a.k.a. Uh, KGBs that we really need to get back to. That's right. Um, I'm hoping that it's Russia. I really don't want flashbacks for season four, but if we're going to get them, it better be Russia. <laughs> because I figure once we get past that, but no, wait, once we get to season five, there should never be any more flashbacks. Well, that would be nice. You know what happens if we don't get Russia? I riot. Well, here, here's what happens. You have failed this city. They have failed the fandom, this podcast. They said that season four is supposed to be a lighter tone, and Russia seems like oh, just a bunch of wacky adventures. Looking forward. To, actually looking forward to flashbacks. You heard that right. Wow. About that grade, Kelly? <laughs> I'm sad to say it, but worst season finale of Arrow ever. I agree! <laughs> <laughs> Very sad. Here. So driving off into the sunset would have been a perfect way to end the series, whether it was Felicity or Lil, doesn't matter, or him by himself. Yeah. You know? Him driving by himself would have been better. Because he doesn't know who he is, so how is he gonna go be happy with Felicity? Like, I just don't see it turning out well. Yeah, if you don't know who you are, then how can you give yourself to someone else? Like, they should have, like, if they really wanted to do this, they should have saved it for when it made more sense. Like, I'm tired of Oliver running away every single season finale yes so that, that i mean so what are you gonna give the grade no more no more pussy fit around this situation oh holy cow i gotta say for me this was even worse than the pentultimate um just because if if they're gonna do something they gotta do it now you know this is the finale do i smell an epic fail kelly yes do it kelly do it <laughs> <laughs> I have officially con- fully converted Kelly into a cynic. Yes! <laughs> now that's not true. Because, you know, on the flash it's so fluffy I could die. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they've set me up to expect so much. Because the first two finales were pretty doggone good. So this one just really hurts. And so, well, I, I won't I won't give it the F-bomb. I'm going to give it a B-. <laughs> it's like as close as I can get without doing it. Because I hate, I hate saying that it's failed the city, but, you know. <laughs> uh, it's failed the fandom. It's failed the city. It's failed the podcast. This season has just been awful. <laughs> now, in all fairness, there are tons of people, so they say, that like this season. <laughs> I haven't met them. I mean, I see them on Twitter, but I feel like they're bo- they're Twitter bots. They're they're in Earth Two. <laughs> I, I think it's more than Earth Two. They're like Earth X X One Two Z. 
<laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's just, I want to love this show. I love the first two seasons of the show, but this season really hurts. And so please, please bring me back my show. Everybody is really stressed out and stretched to the max. And I definitely feel like Arrow has suffered. I, I said it and I'll say it again. I don't care. But I actually give this a C plus. Really? Yeah. I get what they were trying to do. They were trying to make the best of a bad situation that they backed themselves into. I really feel like uh, The Flash should have done something to change all of this. But I agree. It's not, like I said on Flashpoint, it is not... Flash's duty to to hold up a sagging arrow or even launch a spinoff in its first season. Like, I thought that that was very rude of them to try to do. So, you know, it is what it is for Arrow. I'm, I'm looking forward to season four because uh, we're supposed to find out who Felicity's dad is. And that is kind of like the last mystery of Arrow for me. And so once I find that out, I can probably be free. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> um, unless they're making uh, David Ramsey and the John Stewart or Green Lantern, I just really don't see anything holding my interest for season four past that whole Felicity thing. So. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So keep us interested, writers. Yeah. I, I, I have no idea where we go from here. So It can only get better. I don't think it can actually get any worse than what they did. This tell is like, don't you dare say that out loud. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm a little nervous that you said that out loud, but hey. (laughs) But I honestly believe that. I believe this was a retooling season because they had to split their focus on so many things. Greg Berlanti, my God, I don't know how, I don't even know if the man sleeps. I'm pretty sure he's a robot. Yeah, yeah, maybe he, maybe he is a pod person. I I definitely think he's a robot. He can't possibly sleep with all these shows. Monsieur Lord is going into a second season. He's got Supergirl on CBS. He's going to be involved in the spinoff. And then he has the Flash and Arrow. Like, I just, I don't know, man. How do you sleep with all those storylines going through your head? And that's what I'm saying. I don't think he does. And timelines. I think actually what's going to happen is that Jeff Johns is going to pick up the slack on the Flash a little bit more. Um, we've got Mark and um, Wendy Merkel. Uh those two are going to be the showrunners for Arrow. I like that we're going to have a little bit more of the feminine balance. And she actually does do a lot of writing for Malcolm. We're going to see more of him. But she makes him a little more bearable and even keeled and stops him from being that over-the-top, you know, kind of caricature. You, you know what? I think I think Berlanti and Kreisberg, they're, they're kind of like River and Ten. Or Eleven. <laughs> they have the diaries and they sync up their diaries every time they see each other. You know what? Honest to God, you probably just hit the nail on the head. They're gonna be like, "How does she know?" <laughs> Let's find the super squint. <laughs> she knows too much. If you don't show up for the live tweet event, I'll know what happened. <laughs> what was your favorite scene of them? Even though I hated the ending, it was kind of fun to see Stephen Mel having fun. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know. But it was fun to get him to see him smiling and having fun. So that was just a nice change. But yeah, the episode was hurting. Ow. My favorite my favorite scene was Malcolm becoming the next Rob Al Ghoul. And this is just like being missing. I wanna I actually wanna see that because that just made me it just literally when I saw that I was like Mega Mega trying to start screaming all the way. <laughs> this has got a one track mind and I I, I I love that about her. <laughs> Dialogue was not very memorable for me, despite all the, the no. abundance of speeches. Yes, monologue city. <laughs> Let's see. I think the most vivid moment in my brain is the actually the ash scene. Mm. I, I for some reason it just that is the scene that stuck. With me. It was I think it's because it was so fantastically captured. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was light and eerie to you know go against to contrast that really messed up situation. Yes. And everybody's just so, uh, you know, quiet and reflective. I mean, even Oliver looked pensive. All right, so I guess we are a rapsies, kind of, sort of. Uh, I do want to remind you guys that no need to be jealous of the Flashpoint because you guys have your own Watch and Win sweepstakes. Woohoo! We heart Paul Blackthorn. Uh, you can follow the tags Dresden Files and QC uh, Watch and Win. W A T C H N. W-I-N because <laughs> I just get down like that. Tons of great prizes. Be sure to check out the Tumblr uh, queenconsolidatedpodcast.tumblr.com or the Facebook. 
uh, just go to Facebook in the search bar, type in Queen Consolidated Podcast, and we'll pop right up for you. We're trying to get legit, so 25 likes or more to get that official Queen Consolidated Podcast name. So uh, if you could help us out, that would be great. Yes, yes. Um, you can email us your thoughts about the season, this episode, whether we're just two crazy gals. <laughs> <laughs> at queenconsolidated.smg at gmail.com you can find us on twitter at qc underscore smg pod yeah that's all our social stuff so I guess it's on to the personal shameless plugs and self promotion well you can find me on twitter, tumblr, instagram and everywhere else that matters at super squint that's s-u-p-e-r-s-q-u-i-n-t you can read me over at voiceoftv.com and you can also listen to me on Before the Bat with Tyler and Phil. And, of course, on Flashpoint with the lovely Miss Lilith. As for me, you know, you guys, by now you should know at least. You can find me on Twitter at Lilith Hellfighter. You can find me on Tumblr, lilithfairyhellfighter.tumblr.com. Be sure to check out my blog, littlepopcultureVulture.blogspot.com. It is a blog dedicated to all kinds of geekery and pop culture. So if you like this podcast, I'm sure you'll love the blog. Please be sure to check out www.southgatemediagroup.com where you can find a full list of our podcasts, information about the hosts, and really cool weekly blogs. Also, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes. And remember, download and subscribe because streaming doesn't count. So uh, it's going to be a hellish, hellish five months. But don't worry, we're not going to leave you trapped on the island. We'll rescue you with our fun watch win. We also have a really cool Super Friends roundtable plan talking about uh, season three of Girl overall with the boys from Before the Bat and Flash Power Hour. So uh, stay tuned to the feed for uh, Arrow Entertainment. <laughs> Queen Consolidated, signing off.